Is there a lot of negative learning experience that may even speak against osseointegration? Well, many periodontists claim that all bone loss we see after the first year in CETO depends on periimplantitis. And that will be my theme today. Uh, I believe, in some contrast, that there are many different reasons for marring bone loss around implants. Um, and I will present those to you. But a case like this, not only poor hygiene, but also modern bone loss. This case must be periimplantitis, must it not? Well, not necessarily. It may, be, it may have developed a secondary type of periimplantitis, but of course the start of the bone loss is generally quite unknown. And uh, a bad egg, we usually say, would not need to incriminate the hen. And we have to look at these two matters in a differently because bone loss, I believe, is the start of the problem. Periimplantitis is a late development. So what can we then learn if we study implants from, from different uh, papers? Well, we can sum up to say that there are a number of major implant problems. And uh, those may include primary failures. They may include secondary failures and indeed also marginal bone resorption. And marginal bone resorption in turn may, but must not, but may lead to secondary failures. If we look at those, starting with the primary failures, we don't really know why they occur. We can't learn, since we don't know the reason for them, we can't learn to avoid them in the future, we have to accept that one or maybe two percent of the implants we place uh, will, will, will fail primarily. They will never achieve osseointegration. That has been reported, of course, in the literature in many papers. So I will deal mainly with secondary failures and marginal bone resorption, how these problems can be avoided. How common are those? How common are secondary failures? Well, at a follow-up time of five to 10 years, we may lose another few percent of our implants due to these problems. How common is marginal bone resorption? Well, this depends on whom you ask. Some European peri-orientated colleagues of ours seem to regard the black death of the 1300s an uncommon and minor problem compared to what they call peri-implantitis. They call it an enormously common problem. 